NFS gets a bad rap, but it's still the best, most reliable solution for attaching read-write storage to multiple nodes. What makes it cranky is having its network ripped out from under it, which is why NFS clusters are so notoriously hard to work with. When they're up, they're great, but if failover takes too long, you'll get the dreaded stale NFS file handle error that you're not going to fix until you reboot the client. Don't be fooled by fancy solutions like Ganesha on Gluster or Ceph. They're still vulnerable to the same thing. Anytime the NFS server IP goes away and comes back, it's a coin toss if your file systems are going to reconnect. But that doesn't mean we can't model an NFS cluster in Kubernetes. The idea of the node becomes a pod, and with health checking in place, we can rely on Kubernetes to restart pods if they don't reattach. But it begs the question, why do we want to do this? Lots of things can benefit from shared storage. Look at WordPress. You can bake everything into the container except for the uploads directory. Maybe you don't run WordPress, but lots of people do. Lots of people run web applications that use dynamic data that's changed by external sources. If you're not using shared storage, then you're managing some other replication solution that's just making things more complex. It's tempting to abandon good system administration practices just to shoehorn something into a container, but resist the urge to architect solutions that you know one day are going to break. To give our cluster shared storage, we'll need to run an NFS server as a pod inside of it. We need to do this in a way that keeps us flexible, not rooted to a single node or availability zone. That means we need to disconnect the pod from its storage, and to do that, we'll turn to OpenEBS. OpenEBS is a solution for distributed storage with block-level replication that runs inside of Kubernetes. Block-level replication lets us replicate only the changed blocks of the storage layer, regardless of what they're part of. Files, text, binary data, images, database content, it doesn't matter. OpenEBS runs a storage replica on multiple nodes and replicates the data between them, and then it acts as a storage controller presenting a volume to Kubernetes for pods to consume. The pod uses the volume, and OpenEBS is responsible for making sure that the active replica is the one serving that content. In the event of a failure, it promotes a standby replica to active, and the pod is none the wiser. So what we're going to do is create a storage layer with OpenEBS, then attach an NFS server to it, and then make that NFS service available as a storage class for pods to use. This isn't super exciting, but it's super cool. We're barely going to touch the surface of OpenEBS, so I encourage you to go and check out their documentation and join their Slack to be part of a great community. We'll launch OpenEBS from Helm using only the defaults for the chart. This creates a bunch of storage classes. Since I'm going to use sparse disks within the boot volume of the hosts, I'll set the Jiva storage class to be the default. Now, this may not be the best solution for production. There are other storage classes that will use raw block devices or even host path volumes. Which one you choose depends on where your clusters are running and what you want to do with them. For example, I was using CStore with volumes attached to worker nodes with the DigitalOcean Kubernetes service. They did an emergency upgrade to all of the clusters, and that created new hosts. Those hosts didn't know how to attach the disks, so none of my workloads came back up. Those are interesting problems to solve. Using Jiva disks wouldn't have solved it either because the data is local to the node that they just deleted. So for now, I recommend that you don't use a container attached storage solution with a hosted Kubernetes provider. All right, next we're gonna launch the NFS server provisioner app. That's taken from the Helm stable repo as well. Here, I'll enable persistence, set it to use the Jiva storage class and tell it to provision 20 gigs of storage. This is going to be replicated across three nodes, giving us fast failover for the volume. In order to support NFS within Kubernetes, you'll still need to have the NFS server kernel modules loaded on the host. You can do this by installing them at the time of provisioning if they aren't installed by default. For Ubuntu, that's NFS kernel server, and I do it from the cloud init user data. Another benefit of container attached storage is that it disconnects you from the cloud provider's issues. There have been numerous times when an EC2 node has hung and the underlying volume for the PV can't detach. As long as it's connected to a dead node, it can't be connected to anything else. This left me at the mercy of Amazon's infrastructure. If I was using a container attached storage solution, I would have had two more replicas on other nodes. The controller would have promoted one of them to be the master. Eventually, the hung volume would reappear in the cluster, and when it did, OpenEBS would bring it up to parity with the rest of the replicas. The downside to a CAS solution is that you need multiples of the amount of storage that you're actually using in order to benefit from replication. There's also the cost of inter-AZ data transfer, so consider these things in your architecture and design. After the NFS server comes up, we'll deploy a simple example workload. This will just be three Nginx replicas, and I'll set up a health check because if we nuke the NFS server and these pods hang, I want Kubernetes to restart them. I'll ask for a 100 megabyte volume for the NFS storage class, and we'll set those to start. While they boot, 
Let's create an ingress with an XIP host name, and then when it's all up and running, we'll hit it with a browser. Okay, the 403 is expected because we put the empty NFS volume directly on the document root. Since there's nothing there, Nginx throws an error, and that's why we're only doing a TCP health check for this example. I'll update that through the shell to give us a simple message in the browser, and now the site loads fine. The NFS server provisioner doesn't come with a health check, and because it's a stateful set, we can't add one afterward. When combined with the default pod eviction timeout of five minutes, you can imagine that this solution will have problems if a node goes down unexpectedly. But then again, so would any other NFS solution. At least in this case, we can see that a forced failure triggered by draining the node automatically recovers when the pod moves to a new node. Once we drain the node and the pod's evicted, it takes a little while to start on the new node. Now, in this case, that might have been because the new node needed to pull down the container image, or it could be because the new pod was waiting for OpenEBS to attach the volume. I did more tests after this, and when the pod moved to a node that already had the container image, it restarted much faster. But regardless, this is a good demonstration of the test in suboptimal conditions. You can see that the site hangs by the little floaty icon in the browser tab, but once the NFS pod restarts, it recovers. The downtime was about a minute in this case. It's not awesome, but if you've ever worked with real NFS solutions, you know that this is better. In traditional infrastructure, you're either left in a situation where you never reboot the NFS server for fear of everything else crashing, or you build an NFS cluster and live in fear of it not properly failing over, because when that happens, everything crashes anyway. I can tell you from my experience on both sides of this equation that I much prefer this solution for NFS and Kubernetes when there isn't a provider-backed NFS solution available. Incidentally, if you're in a location that has an NFS server, you can use the NFS Client Provisioner Helm chart to set up an NFS Client Storage class. Requests to that storage class will connect to an external NFS server and provision a volume in a predefined export. That's all for this week. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If there's anything that you'd like to see in a future video, you can let me know in the comments below or on Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.